So let's take a closer look here at Azure role-based access controls, because this is something we're definitely gonna be using a lot. And so role-based access control helps you manage who has access to Azure resources, what they can do with those resources and what areas they have, have access to. And the idea is that you have a user and you want to assign them a role, so you're gonna use a role assignment. And a role assignment's made up of three elements. You have the security principle, the role definition, and the scope. And we're gonna look at those three things in a little bit more detail here in a second. And there are four fundamental Azure roles, which we are going to learn. And then Azure RBAC also includes over 70 built-in roles, which we definitely do not need to go into great detail. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, one of those three elements first, which is the security principle. And this represents the identity requesting access to an Azure resource. And when we say identity, that's just like a loose term for something. And that something could be a user in your Azure Active Directory, a group, uh, which defines a set of users in your Azure Active Directory, a service principle, so a sec security identity used by applications or services to access specified Azure resources or a managed identity, an identity in your active uh, Azure Active Directory that is automatically managed by Azure. So service principle is basically an Azure service and then managed identity is something in your Azure Active Directory. Then we'll move on to scope and a scope is just a set of resources that um, access, that uh, assess um, the role, uh, the role assignment applies to. And so scope access controls at the management subscription or resource group level. So what does that mean? And we, we have another slide on this. I can't remember what section it's in, but you have this breakdown of scope where you have management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, or resources. So when you're saying I'm setting a scope, you're saying, what is the scope? Is it on a management group? Is it on a particular resource? Is it a resource group? And that's what we're trying to say there. And then last, the, the last element there is a role definition, and this is a collection of permissions. So a role definition lists operations that can be performed such as read, write, and delete. And roles can be high level, like owner specific, or like a virtual machine reader. And so Azure has uh, uh, built-in roles, and we said there were four fundamental built-in roles, and here they are, it's owner, contributor, reader, and user admin uh, administrator. So you wanna know those four, and then across the board, you have those three um, operations, read, grant, and then create, update, delete. So you can see the owner can do everything. The contributor can uh, both read and create stuff, but they just can't grant access to other people. The reader just has read-only access. And then a user access administrator is granting other users uh, privileges, but themselves are not creating anything, all right?